Hello, uh, welcome to another coding challenge with me, <laughs> coding challenge person, YouTube thing. Okay, this is a game called Frogger. I'm gonna play this video here. Oh, oh. So Frogger is a game where a frog <laughs> tries to get from the bottom, right there, there's the frog. The frog is supposed to get from there all the way up there. Now, the idea is the frog needs to avoid the cars but then the frog, when it gets to the river, needs to land on the logs or the lily pads, wherever they are, to make it across. So I would like to make this game now. I'm going to make it in something called Processing, which is a programming environment um, uh, built uh, with, on top of the programming language Java that you can download from processing.org. I will also release, after the, this video is finished, and this will probably video will be in a bunch of parts, I will also release a JavaScript version of the code so you can make a browser-based version of this game. <laughs> okay, I have to stop this uh, because it's distracting me too much. Um, let me say another couple things. Um, I'm going to keep things very simple. So I'm not going to implement all the features of the game. There won't be any sound. All these little like beautiful animation details I probably won't implement, uh, uh, you know, as well as sort of the graphics and visual design. But it is my hope that the internet, the wonderful world of the internet, will watch this video and take this code and make all sorts of crazy, fun, extra interesting versions of this game. So let's get started. Okay, so let's map out some of the things we need. No, I didn't just do this a few minutes ago and mess it all up. Uh, let's map out a of some of the things we need uh, to program Frogger. So I'm going to consider everything in the world of Frogger to be a rectangle. So the frog is a rectangle. The cars are, are rectangles. You know, there might be a long rectangle if it's a truck or an actual square. You know, the frog's going to be a square. The same thing, the logs, the lily pads, everything's a rectangle. Because what I want to be, you know, invent, you know, I obviously could put my own image in there. There could be a little animation. I hope that's what you guys will do if you make a version of this after watching this video. <laughs> but the only thing that I need is to be able to know, does the frog intersect a car or does it intersect a log? So I need rectangle, rectangle, intersection. And it turns out, <laughs> after like a messing, after getting a little confused and doing a little research, there's a really nice way of doing that. So. Um, I could actually do something. So if I have a rectangle and what I'm, what I'm keeping track of is the left side, the right side, the top, and the bottom. And if I had, this is R1, for example, and if I have another one that's R2 that also has a left, right, a top, and a bottom, I could say something like, well, is the top of R2 in between the top and bottom of R1? If it is, and also like the left side. But that's actually going to be a lot trickier than just... What if instead of trying to determine if they're intersecting, what if I just try to determine if they're not intersecting, right? So if they're not intersecting is a much easier thing to test because I know they're not intersecting if the left of rectangle two is greater than the right of rectangle one, right? That means the rectangle is somewhere over here. No matter where it is vertically, it can't be intersecting. Or if the right of rectangle two is less than the, <laughs> the left of rectangle one, then it's over here. Same thing for the top if it's above it. If the, um, so same thing for the bottom if it's above it and the top if it's below it. So if I can determine if it's not intersecting, then not not intersecting is intersecting. So let's go write that code really quickly. There's some music playing that you guys can't hear, but I can hear it. And it's not just in my head. There's a room back here. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, this is a little bit silly and unnecessary because there is actually a Java class can you hear it now? It's much louder. <laughs> there is actually a Java class uh, called Rectangle that I could make use of, but I am going to just make my own. And I'm going to give uh, it a left, a right, a top, and a bottom. So I'm going to create a rectangle that has a left, right, a top, and a bottom. And when I make that rectangle, I'm going to write a constructor for this object where I can, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to allow the rectangle to be defined with an X, a Y, and a width, and a height. And then left is the X, right is the X plus the width, uh, top is the Y, and bottom is the Y plus the height, right? So often, oh, let me save this as Frogger. So often in programming, 
<laughs> if which you guys could hear the sounds that are coming. I'm just not talking about them because it's just going to be weird for people who are watching this and can't hear them and you think I'm a crazy person with sounds in my head, which would not be such an unreasonable thing for you to think if you've watched any of my videos. But nonetheless, I digress. <laughs> Uh, typically, in, pro in, in a lot of computer graphics environments, if I'm going to define a rectangle that's going to appear on the screen, I'm going to define it with an x, a y, and a width and a height. But here, I want to actually keep track of the left, the right, the top, and the bottom for this intersection test. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to write a function here called uh, intersects. And that function, oh good, people in the chat are telling me they can hear the sound. I am not completely insane, only just, you know, mildly. <laughs> uh, Boolean intersects. I want a function that returns true. And, and let me zoom out here. And it receives another rectangle. So I want a function that tests a particular rectangle against another rectangle, whether or not they're intersecting. So the big expression that I want is, is I want to say, if, I know they're not intersecting if I say that this dot left is greater than the other's right, or, right, so I actually don't, in Java, I technically don't have to say this dot, but you know, come on, if I have an opportunity to write this dot, I'm gonna write this dot. So I wanna look at this rectangle's left versus the other rectangle's right, or this rectangle's right, and maybe I can just uh, put a line break here, uh, is less than the, ooh, uh, is less than the other rectangle's left, or this rectangle's top is greater than the other rectangle's bottom, or this rectangle's bottom is less than the other rectangle's top. So if I return the result of this Boolean expression, if any one of these things is true, Right? If this left is greater than that one's right, or this right is less than that one's left, et cetera, et cetera, then I know they're not intersecting. And the inverse of that would be if it would be they are intersecting. So actually, all I need to do now is say return the result of not that whole expression. And this is a really fast operation to determine if two rectangles are intersecting. All right, so now I think it's time, right? We have our sketch. What I ultimately want to start with is I want to be able to write some code like this, frog f, or frog frog. And then I want to be able to say a size, you know, I want to have a canvas that's like 640 by 480. And I want to be able to say frog equals new frog. And I want to say things like frog.show and maybe frog.update or something like this. So I want to write the code in an object-oriented fashion where I can just create this frog object. Now, interestingly, I made this rectangle object just to keep track of the properties of a rectangle. So there are a couple options here of things I could do. I could make a new class, right? I want to make a frog object. So to make a frog object, I need to say class frog. And then I need to uh, you know, have a constructor function. And I need to have a function that's like show and a function that's update. So this is the skeleton of the frog class, the class being the template for making an object. Here, I have the frog object, and now I can say I have no errors in my code. Now there's nothing, I didn't like write the actual information that needs to go into the frog class, but I have a question. I have a question. A frog is a rectangle. So there's two approaches I can take here. I'm very excited about this because I haven't covered this in a lot of my videos. I'm going to look at something called inheritance. What I might have done previously in other videos to avoid talking about inheritance is I might have said, ah, a frog has a rectangle associated with it. So the frog keeps track. Part of its data is the rectangle which defines where it is. And in some ways, I kind of want to do that because I think there will be some simplicity to that. However, something else I could do is I could say frog extends rectangle, meaning, meaning the frog is actually a rectangle and it, the frog itself has an intersects function. I don't have to retype it. The frog inherits all of those properties, left, right, top, bottom. The frog inherits the intersect function. And now I can add additional functionality to the frog. And the reason why this is maybe will be so powerful is I'm going to say car, class car extends 
rectangle too. So the idea is that the rectangle is the foundation for all the other things that will be in the world, but cars and frogs behave differently, so they also need their own code. So this is how it's going to work. So let's comment out the car for a second, and let's start working on the frog. Now, we do have an error here. It's giving me this red squiggly line, the red squiggly line of doom. Ah, red squiggly line. So let's at least look and see what is that error here. And it's going to say, oh boy, we do not like this error. <laughs> I don't have my sound effect for this error. I'll just play this one. <laughs> Implicit superconstructor frogger.rectangle is undefined. So one of the odd things about working with inheritance is I need to define the constructor, the way an object is made, in a somewhat of a special way. So the frog, I mean, sorry, the rectangle has a constructor. Make a new rectangle. What I want to say is that the frog also gets a, uh, an x, a y, and a width, and a height, right? That's how I want to define a frog, but I need to figure out how, when I define a frog with those values, do its inherited properties get set? And the way that I could do that is with a keyword called super. Super X, Y, W, H. And what this does is this says, when I say new frog with an X, Y width and height, then make sure you also call the super, super being the parent, the super classes constructor function, passing in those values. So this initializes the inherited properties of frog. So now that I've written the frog constructor, which essentially just calls the parent constructor, the super constructor in rectangle, I can now give it, let's have the frog start somewhere arbitrary, 100, 100, um, 50. And you know what, the frog is a square. So let's do one little goofy thing here, which is the frog is never not gonna be a square. So I can just reuse that, I can just show you a little trick here. The frog only needs three variables, and then when it makes the rectangle, it uses that width for both the width and the height. There's a little optimization there for, no real good reason. And then I'm going to get rid of this uh, update function. I'm going to say background 50, background zero. Let's just make it black. Um, and then frog.show. So I want to see that frog. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to write a function now that says uh, fill 255, a rectangle, left, right, top, bottom. Left, right, no, 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 no. <laughs> left, top, right, bottom, right? I want to draw, there's a way that I can draw a rectangle and I haven't actually done it yet by referencing this point, which is left comma top, and this point here, which is right comma bottom. Left comma top, right comma bottom. And processing will do that for me if I say rect mode corners. The left, right, top, and bottom come from the rectangle. Okay, so now I should be able to run this. And there it is. Guess what? <laughs> You've watched a video now for insert number of minutes so far here. And what did I do? I programmed a square, a white square on a black background. So in a way, I'm kind of disappointed with the way that I'm doing this, but hopefully, uh, you know, because I spent all this time setting up all this structure and all I've got is a square on the screen. But hopefully this is going to give us the foundation to really start getting the game going. So let's try to move a bit more quickly here and let's start moving that frog. So I think, okay, so here's the thing. If I go back to that gameplay video, oh, there's the frog. You can see the frog always moves a distinct amount of space with each movement. And it looks like the frog is actually moving essentially based on a grid, which is about the size of the frog itself. Um, there's some nuance to that, but uh, so what I want to do here is create a function, I'll call it move, and the frog will move by some amount, or maybe a direction. So let's have a global variable, which I think um, I'm going to call it grid. So let's think, again, I'm going to be very fast and loose with this idea of a grid. Some games operate entirely fixed and locked to a grid system, like Tetris, for example. I'm going to kind of just sort of think about this grid in a loose, informal way and use it when convenient and not use it when 
when inconvenient. But let's just say the frog, right? The frog's size was 50. So let's also right now have the grid be 50. And I'm gonna say the frog size is the grid like minus four. So I'm gonna kind of think of just this idea of there being a grid over the uh, window, over the whole window, and, um, but the frog kind of being a little bit smaller than that actual grid. And ah, there's gonna be like centering issues. Forget it. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna keep things really simple. I'm just gonna have the frog be the exact same size as the grid. You know, if eventually someday if you were to use like a sprite or an image, you could actually just have some transparent um, um, uh, kind of like buffer border that, that keeps it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep things simple here. So we're gonna have the frog be the same size as the grid. And so the frog, when it moves a given direction, which we could say a given x direction and a given y direction, it, can only, it can't move diagonally, but let's just write it this way. We're going to say x plus equals, oh, no, left. There is no x, right? I've defined this frog entirely by its rectangle, which is the left and uh, the left and right and top and bottom. Now maybe I want to have some redundant variables to keep track of its x, y, maybe one at center. Oh, there's so much I could do here, but let's just, let's just keep going. Let's just fast and loose. Left plus x direction, and then top plus y direction, okay? So that's what I want to move it. Now, I want to move it when I press the arrow keys. So I'm going to write a function, global event, called key press. This is part of processing. I'm going to say if the key code equals up, and this is all built into processing, else, and I could use a switch statement here. I know everyone in the comments the switch statement, but I started writing an if statement, and I, I just never remember the syntax for those switch statements. So I want to just check all four possibilities. Up, down, right, left. So I want, to, I want the frog to move. If it's moving up, I want it to move 0 comma negative 1. If it's moving down, 0 comma 1. If it's moving to the right, that's 1 comma 0. If it's moving to the left, that is uh, zero, oh, oh, negative 1 comma 0. And then when it moves, ah, the whole point of this is times grid. Times grid. So I always want to move it by the amount that I've considered this grid. There is no actual grid here. The grid is just a figment of my imagination that I'm using to think about it when convenient. But I'm not actually keeping track of like a 2D array of cells with states and all that kind of thing that I might in a more tile-based system. Okay, so let's run this now again. Oh, okay, so what's going on here? So obviously, oh, I just <laughs> did something very silly, which is that I'm only moving the left, and so if I'm only moving the top. So if the top moves up, the top moves down, then I'm just growing or shrinking the rectangle. So this is a problem. And I could get around this by saying like, oh, let me move both the left and the right and the top and the bottom. But I think what I'm realizing is it's just going to be better for everybody involved and for the future of this <laughs> game of Frogger um, for me to just actually consider the rectangle itself to have uh, an x, a y, a width, and a height. And then when it comes time to test for intersection, that's where I can just calculate these values on the fly. And so I need to do that for this particular rectangle and then for the other, I'll call it O right, O, o right, o, o top, O bottom, which would be uh, other dot X. So what I'm doing is, and again, I'm sure this could be optimized in some way, but if the rectangle itself keeps track of an x and y and width and height, then I can very quickly just calculate the left, right, top, and bottom of one rectangle, the left, right, top, and bottom of the other rectangle, and then I can test those. So I'm doing a little refactoring, and I'm sure I'll come up with a reason why this was a terrible idea sometime later, but for now, I can rewrite this code like this. So this is exactly the same, but the rectangle is keeping track of x, y, with height. Now I have a little bit of an issue here, which is that I made the arguments here 
to the constructor x, y with height. And so honestly, what I, what I need to do to differ, I'm going to say this dot x, this dot y, this dot, uh, oh, this dot w is w, this dot y is y, and this dot h is h. And this is because in Java, um, if I have variables with the same name and the temporary param arguments to this constructor, the parameters are x, y, y, and h, and I want to use those to set the rectangle object's actual x, y, w, and x, y, w, and h, then I, that's where I want to use the this dot here to differentiate them. And I don't have to down here because there's no confusion. So if I don't say this dot, it is this dot. But I could, if I wanted to, add this dot here. Okay, the this dot, the this dot. I'm always talking about the this dot. Okay, now everything's good. I don't have to define it by, I could just define it by x, y, and w. And then I could just move the x and the y. So now my frog is just so much simpler. The rectangle can have all the gobbledygook about the, how the rectangle is being considered. But the frog just has an x and a y, which I move. And now, there we go. I am moving the frog around the screen. <laughs> OK, so I think that this is going to be the end part one of programming Frogger. I, in the chat that's going on live right now, I have now been told that I have an error in the rectangle, which I forgot to say, oh, right. I just said right where this should be, oh, right. Um, and then the other thing that I want to add to this is that I want the frog to start at the bottom center. So I am going to have the frog start at width divided by two, minus grid divided by two, that's the center minus half the grid. Ah, that's a little bit slow. No. Uh, well, and then I'm going to say height minus, no, no, no. I just want to say width divided by two minus grid and height minus grid. I want to put it right there. I guess I in the center. So that should be grid divided by two, right? Yeah. So I want it to be there. So now that I can start playing Frogger. My screen is not divisible by 50. <laughs> so let's fix that. Let's use, uh, let's make this, I don't know. It, maybe it should just be a square for simplicity, 500 by 500. There we go. So now, hey, I won Frogger. Yay. OK, so that's the end of part one. In the next video, I'm going to add the cars going by. Once we, and that's going to be part two. And then eventually part three, I'm going to add the logs and the turtles. So see you in part two.